All right, today we're just going to look at some special factoring um, of polynomials, um, sort of shortcuts that you want to watch out for before you actually use the factor theorem. Because as you know, the factor theorem is quite long, so in a couple of special cases, you always want to factor using other formulas or other tools that you've previously learned first. So today we're going to look at what is called the difference and sum of cubes. Okay, and here are the formulas uh, that you're going to pretty much need to put to memory um, just by practicing. You'll notice they're pretty similar, obviously, to the difference of squares, only this one can be both the difference and the sum um, because they are cubic. Okay, so we'll just take a look at a couple of examples of how we apply those formulas. Okay, so in our first example, x cubed minus 1, we're going to first have a binomial. We're always going to take the cube root of both terms, so the cube root of x cubed is x. The, the sign is actually going to follow, so whatever the sign is in the question, if it's a difference, then our, the same sign is going to be in our binomial, and then the cube root of 1 is 1. Then we're going to have our trinomial bracket, okay, where we square the first term, so we get an x squared. Okay, we multiply the two terms together, and here's where the sign is opposite, so we're going to have a plus x. And then our last term, we just square that negative 1, and it becomes a positive 1. This trinomial right here will never be able to be factored further. That's part of the special formula, so you don't need to worry about being able to go further with this. Once you've got your binomial and your trinomial, you are actually done. So let's try another one, just a little bit more complicated. So again, in our binomial... We're going to take the cube root of the first term, so the cube root of 27 is 3, and we have an a cubed, so we have an a. Then the cube root of 125 is 5, and the sign, it's again a difference, so the sign follows. And if we open up our second bracket, we're then going to square the first term, so we're going to square 3a, so we get 9a squared. The sign is the opposite, so it's going to be a plus. Okay, we're going to multiply the two together, and we're going to get 15a. And then our last term, we're going to square the last term, so we're going to get 25. That's, of course, always going to be positive. And I think we need one more example here with a positive. That's an actual sum of cubes, because I just realized that we didn't have one. So let's do a number 3, and let's do 8x cubed plus 1. Okay, so again, we're going to have our binomial. We take the cube root of the first term is 2x. Take the cube root of the second term, which is 1. The sign follows. The sign is the same in the binomial. And then in the trinomial, we're going to square the first term, so we're going to get 4x squared. It's going to be the opposite sign, so here it's negative. Multiply the two together, we get 2x. And we're going to square the last term, so we get a plus 1. Okay, so we're going to practice this a whole bunch of times in class tomorrow just to make sure we have those formulas down. Okay, so another tool is actually one that you learned before, that you learned in grade 10 and in grade 11, and we touched on it at the beginning of the year. But the point that I want to make to you here is don't forget about factor by grouping. When you see four terms, you want to make sure that you are looking for grouping before you do the factor theorem. As you've seen for the yesterday, the factor theorem does take quite a bit of time. It takes quite a bit of space even on your page. So you want to be looking for grouping as sort of your first option. It's faster. And remember, I told you that time is going to be a factor in this course, so we want to always watch out for it. And just in case you need a reminder on factor by grouping, we're looking for terms that go together. Um, so I think here I'm kind of noticing that my 16 and 48 might have a good common factor and my x cubed and my 3x squared might have a good factor. So let's try grouping. Those are already beside each other. So let's pull what's common out of those. Out of the first two, I know an x squared is common. And then left over, I'm left with an x plus a 3. And then I know I'm going to pull a 16 out of the second two. And it looks like I'm probably going to pull out the negative. You always want to double check these signs just to be careful. And that would leave me with a positive x and a plus 3. And that works out again because we want these two brackets to match. Okay, now we are going to basically common factor out that binomial. The x plus 3 is common to both terms. And then we're left with an x squared minus 16. And of course, hopefully you can see that that's actually now a difference of squares. So we can actually take that one even a step further. So we have an x plus 3. And we have an x minus 4 and an x plus 4. 
Okay, again, this is much faster than the factor theorem. Very, very important for us to understand. So tomorrow's class, we're just going to practice all kinds of these. I can give you ones with fractions and all kinds of fun stuff, but you just want to make sure that you, we're going to mix this in with our factor theorem questions so that you're looking for the most appropriate method. That's going to be the key. See you tomorrow.